Mm -mm. No, it seems to be working. Let's see if I can bring the chat out. talking Norwegian. <laughs> it's probably me. So, um, and probably my computer making noise. So yeah, I think it's working and um, I think I can start. Yeah, I was fiddling with its uh, chats, but um, anyway. gonna stop my own uh, chat now, my own stream, only this stream setting, so I'm not going to watch my own. So I was just tell me if it doesn't work. So yes, so the first thing I was going to show you was this circuit I've been working on because I want my um, app box to uh, detect audio and shift um, in on that amplifier that has audio and bring it out on the speakers, one set of speakers. So there are many ways to do that and uh, <coughs> I made a video earlier with uh, a detection digital circuit. All that is working now, so what I need now is some detection on this side, such that I can drive this uh, digital inputs. So, if you haven't watched my video, the way it works is that uh, if there's audio on one of the input and the current one goes silent, then and only then the output will change to the current um, amplifier with audio on it. So, yes. So that's how it works. So, but somehow we need to make this digital signal, and uh, the multiplexer is stepping through all of these uh, five inputs, uh, six inputs. Oh, I painted five, but I will use six anyway. So there are some requirements. For example, if there is a signal, it has to go off or reset whenever the next amplifier is detected. So, look at that. So I have made five circuits in Elvispice. Um, actually, this one circuit, but every time I made a major change, I made another, I saved uh, uh, the circuit in a new number, like peak detect here, and then peak detect two, and three, and four, and five, so. Now, a peak detection. I uh, was on EV blog video. There was this uh, video he had about peak detection. There are many ways you can do that. You can do that with a diode and a capacitor. Easy, isn't it? Uh, but since we are going to detect very low levels, I think we will use comparators for that. So, now. 
I saw a comment by um, I think it was um, Gadget UK. He talked about putting a BU meter, you know, a bar graph showing the audio level inside a clear Commodore 64 case. I thought that was cool. So I looked at the chip he was talking about. It's the LM3915. And um, see? And this chip is such that you can feed in audio or a signal of some sort on some of the inputs. I don't remember where. Here, single source. And then you get like a bar graph or a dot graph. And the way that it works is it has a uh, input buffer, so the signal comes in here. Now, the signal is uh, buffered, so the signal out of the buffer is the same as the input. And it's fed to all of these comparators here. And the reason why they have that is because they have like a uh, voltage di divider ladder, sort of. Which you also can see, uh, since this is audio, uh, the change up here is 2k apart from one resistor to the other. And down here it's only 02 or something so it's a uh, exponential growth so uh, our perception of uh, audio is uh, logarithmic so you have like an exponential scale now I'm not interested in all of that I just need one I need just need to detect that there's uh, audio so so therefore I'm using a device called LM339 and that one is very, very versatile. You can use it for many things. Um, and in this case, I'm using it to detect peaks though. So, yeah. So how does this work? Well, you have the LM39 and uh, I have a signal coming in on it. And also, uh, the way that this works is uh, the comparator tries to do anything on the output to make the inputs equal. That's a very typical for a comparator. It's also sometimes um, uh, used as uh, operational amplifiers. Uh, I have done that in this case. Uh, it's okay if the frequencies are slow, so and for audio it's very slow though. So now, if you look here. Uh, first, I can show you the data sheet for it. So, I brought up the data sheet. You can see if you search for uh, LM339 applications, notes, you get two results. You get one from OnSemi, on just a couple of examples. So, steer away from that and go to the Texas Instruments one. You have enormous amount of uh, examples in here. See here, this big list of examples, uh, application notes. So, you can see most clock driver, puts, proofs with modulation, <laughs> one shot multi vibrator, it's a lot of stuff. But down here you can see it has a positive peak detector. So let's, let's get there. Positive peak there, and this is the circuit I have made. Actually, don't get confused about the LM139. That's uh, not uh, important. It's in the same family, and you can also see it says one of four. So there are four of these comparators in one package. So the fact that they can use it in so many ways makes it uh, this one single package very useful. So, uh, and we will see that later in this show. So, let's get back here. So, we have the circuit. I have the capacitor, capacitor down here. And you can notice one thing about the circuit. Uh, down here from the capacitor side, it can only pull up. The circuit can't pull this capacitor down. So, if it could pull it down, then this uh, capacitor voltage, would, uh, which is fed back to the negative input, would follow the positive inputs exactly, or with the 
like uh, a uh, input offset which is uh, it's a property of this uh, comparator so uh, the input offset is uh, like it's like an error it's um, the precision of the op uh, op-up or comparator so so let's simulate it so let's see so I have a 200 millivolt signal it starts at the beginning and it stops after a while I have a clock pulse we we'll get into that later but for now we're just going to look at uh, this part of the circuit here so what comes out of the comparator is for every time we have a peak there will be like a, a little spike so it tries to regulate something and what does it regulate? well it tries to keep maintain the charge on the capacitor so let's have a look at that there you can see at the very beginning the voltage is around zero on the capacitor the red one for some reason it drops down there I'm not sure why but instead of it following this signal down again it stays there because this circuit can't pull this current down if it could do that it would do that so so it stays there and remembers it and then it can stay there until uh, the digital circuitry decides to accept it so um, but 100 millivolts we can't use that for anything right so you can see here that it uh, remembers it and after a while I have a reset I haven't talked about that yet you can see that peak will uh, reset by that transistor so to make it available for the digital circuitry you have to feed it in on another comparator and remember we have four of these comparators in one package it's no problem and uh, I also have uh, a reference voltage which is 80 millivolts uh, 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 not sure what to use but let's use that for now so if this peak detected voltage is above 80 millivolts then we get you can see we get 5 volts out the comparator so because then the positive input is larger than the negative input and the comparator just shoots up to the rail via this 1k so you can also see there's a small um, before the signal stops there there's a reset pulse so I can see this is uh, blue maybe it's not so easy to see that on the stream I can see it online so I think it's okay Okay, so here we have the reset pulse. Let's just check the schematic that I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, the reset circuit. So we need it. Uh, why do we need a reset circuit? Well, uh, for every clock cycle, which comes down here. Let's run it again. I don't need to run it. I could have just zoomed it. You can see we have a clock going here. Um, it to 5.2 so easier to see the uh, top edge yes uh, every time the clock goes down the amplifier counter yes thanks Toshio that's good every time the clock goes down the counter will change to the next amplifier and then you want your peak detector to start looking for peaks on that next detector so the peaks um, detector output is down here and you you want to reset the detector such that it can pick up the next amplifier <coughs> and that's what I've done down here now so uh, you can see the signal hold on uh, I, I lost it for a moment. Let's just look at the uh, falling edge right there. Okay, so what I've done <coughs> is that I short circuit this capacitor with a MOSFET 
when I get a uh, negative falling edge here. So, uh, if I get a negative falling, actually, it's the opposite. So, this circuit is not uh, working properly, but uh, we will see in next circuit that it does work. So, for now, let's just look at the positive going edge. So, how do you get like a little reset pulse instead of like a long pulse? Well, you can shape it. So, I have put a capacitor here, such that this uh, square, pull, uh, square wave have to pass that. And you can see what happens after this. You see it only passes high frequency signals. So... And uh, another uh, characteristic you can see when you pass a square pulse through a capacitor like this is that you get a very sharp rising edge, right? Because the current uh, shoots through and uh, the voltage just follows on the other side of the cap. However, when the uh, voltage now on the input stabilizes, uh, the capacitor will start. Um, what shall I say, discharge through this 1k over here, so you can actually control this uh, discharge rate by changing the uh, input here, so let's see the output of this uh, circuit. So here you can see the reset action going, it's not very uh, accurate, but if I open the output after the last comparator, you can see that we get a, a sort of uh, reset here, and then we get another peak, probably. Let's see. Yeah, there's another peak there. Let's see, closer. And it goes on. So, let's go to the next circuit, because um, this one isn't uh, resetting on falling edges. So, that's, maybe that's a peak detect four. So let's see what's in the next one. What have I done here? Um, yeah, the change here is in the feedback loop to the LM339. You can see that uh, it's no longer feeding back that capacitor. It's feeding back a reference point. So in fact, I could have just drawn it a little bit nicer, like this, and then uh, hit uh, like this, and then deleted all of this unnecessary wiring, right? So now we are only looking for peaks, and whenever there's a peak we charge this point up, and how much do we charge it? We charge it uh, almost up to 5 volt, there's say the problem though because of this uh, diode in the bipolar so it doesn't stay up at 5 but at a, uh, a diode drop anyway that's not a big problem so so yeah but then I was thinking okay we have a reset pulse here and we depends on kind of what kind of signal we feed in and uh, how well this triggers. So let's have a look. Right, you get the reset here and the reset there and there, and then the signal stops. And therefore, at the end, you will then see that the output goes low. So I think the thing I was, um, I don't remember why I got gone to the next right now, but I think it was about timing because. This, uh, there's not much hold time here, right? Because when this one goes in reset, the other circuit is going to use it, so you need some hold time on that. So yes, yeah, so it's only a couple of microseconds. So, and the um, reset circuitry here is a little bit different. Um, I have a resistor. Uh, and that's what makes this uh, slope though. So, yeah, I also 
think the reason I had that was also to reduce the current going out of that uh, thing there. The capacitor. So let's go to the next one. And this is number three. I have no idea how many watching, but um, anyway, I just have to concentrate here. So You see on the top there I have like a step directive which is now just a comment because I'm not using it and the nice thing even in the LT spice with step comment um, step directive is that you can you can simulate uh, in a loop for different values so you get the same simulation repeated for every value so for example parameter x, let's say we put x on this one, then you will simulate this one uh, with different values on that resistor there. So oh, I think I did something wrong there. Let's see. You know all of these tools are a little bit different from each other, so so, so what's the difference here now? In fact, I'm just gonna skip it. It wasn't interesting, but the interesting is here. I don't want to waste time on things that uh, just uh, small stuff. So, yes, now you can see these uh, circuits is very different up here. We have gone away from peak detection. And said, okay, we don't actually looking for peaks, but we are looking for a signal that is loud enough to be determined as an audio signal, and we want to remember it. So we mo we need like it. we need memory, a one bit memory, and we also want to reset that memory. So let's have a look at this then. In the beginning here of the circuit, you can see it's, everything is as before. Except now I have a little delay at the start or a offset before the signal comes in. So everything is uh, governed by the uh, clock signal here. So yeah, so, so you can see uh, the clock goes on and then here comes the signal, stimulated circuit. And then when the clock falls down, there should be a reset for the next comparator. So I haven't uh, managed to uh, see. I haven't managed to simulate with uh, analog multiplexers. You know, analog multiplexers. When the next amplifier is selected, uh, it needs to be. A little delay I think in the reset because maybe some some of the signal from the previous amplifier selected will then trigger the latch <laughs> uh, such that uh, it uh, is, isn't really reset so but I look here and uh, the speed uh, propagation delay on this la um, analog multiplexer is addressed to signal out so when the address changes and the signal comes out, it's about uh, um, under it's under one microsecond. So, well, so then we know that at least that's not a big problem. And uh, let's have a look down. Okay, so the signal comes in here. It's uh, compared to 80 millivolts. So it's if the signal is above. 8 millivolts, then the output will uh, indicate that. So if you look closely, you can see that when it goes over a certain peak, it uh, changes. Uh, yeah, now I remember why I went over to this circuit. Because if I now set the input signal to 18 millivolts, the uh, detection becomes fussy. You can see it's a bit fussy. That doesn't matter. 
uh, in this circuit. It does matter in the previous circuit because then we store the peak value and maybe you can't get the peak value up to the threshold you have on your output for detecting the logic high. So, but here it, uh, it uh, triggers the latch to set the latch. So then it's no longer a problem. So, so let's have a look at the latch. This is the latch. And uh, let's bring in the signal again. So you can see, and uh, maybe I should uh, also, if I add another plot, we can have the uh, clock by itself here. So, so for every falling edge, and again, it's not so easy to see. Five point three. Oh, that's that one. Let's try this one. It's the same. Five point three. So, five point three volts. Okay, now you can see it. It's better. So, for every falling edge, we get a, a little reset, and uh, because you have a large amount of peaks coming in uh, the, the it will start uh, the latch will be set again that's the point so if you go into this reset pose let's have a closer look at that um, and you can see that the latch goes up again so let's look at the set input uh, yeah you can see there comes a set pulse so even though it's a bit fussy, it still works though, so let's bring it out of the fussy, fussy range. <laughs> let's bring it a little bit out there, so like this, for example. Now you can see you have a large 5 volt set pulse coming. And um, it's really not... Um, Easy. So if you go in here, you can see the red one drops down here. Then, then, and then there's another peak, and the uh, red one goes up, and that's the latch output. So, um, now the reason why it goes down is because of this reset. So let's have a look at the reset. And I was talking about yeah, it's important to have a um, wide enough. Uh, reset signal so so here comes the reset pulse so it sets uh, uh, resets so yes so this is the falling edge of the clock and if you have this uh, capacitor you will just get the um, uh, high frequency part and it follows the clock very closely as you can see so here's the clock and here is the uh, other side of the clock uh, capacitor that, and then I have a little delay here actually so if you look on this side it's not much uh, I think I can actually remove that part with the resistor there I think I did that because I wanted to reduce the current uh, spike that comes when this uh, clock switches Anyway, but why does it go so slowly up again? I think that's an interesting question. You can see uh, how fast it goes down and it goes up again. So I'm, I'm trying to shape the reset pulse here to get that uh, time delay that I want. So if you look on this side now, you can see the little pulse that I'm making. So, um, the way that this works is that um, this transistor is always on. So it keeps this the value, the sign value here, low. And then when the clock goes low, it drags this gate down, such as turns off for a moment, and therefore the voltage will rise very fast. And I want it to stay in reset for a little while and until we are satisfied <laughs> because uh, it, it 
can take some time for that uh, analog multiplexer to switch over. And then uh, here we can have a little bit of fun actually. So, how do you make this pulse longer? Well, then you have to look at what makes it, what makes this uh, well, uh, voltage of that capacitor or the gate rise. Well, that's that's a resistor there. It's 100k. So, 100k. Um, let's try 10k. Let's see what happens then. Now the uh, plot will change. We can see the spikes are much sharper here. Uh, we can replace it with X. That will be interesting. Now we're going to use that step directive we were talking about up here. So we're going to step X for not norm or, or micro or pirates in any way, but um, it's a 10k, 100k, 1 meg, ah, 3.3. So now we were getting four simulation, and also <laughs> we want, don't want comment. We want spice directed. So, so nothing in the chat yet. Uh, Toshi, you still uh, have the branch. By the way, <laughs> okay. Let's see what happens if we do this. Okay, this is the first simulation. This is the second one. Problem here is that you can't uh, know which one is the first and the last, so you have to just take an education, educated guess. Now we can see what I'm talking about in the simulation. So let's look at the uh, capacitor voltage alone here, or the gate. Let's look at that. Hold on. Yeah, we are looking at that. You can see in one instance it rises very fast. That's the um, 1k. Then you have the, uh, or was it 10k? 10k, 100k, 1 meg. So in the first one it's 10k, and then it's 100k, and then it's 1 mega, mega ohm, and then it's 3.3. So and what does it look like on the output? So let's bring that output up there. The reset thing that I'm trying to shape. Yes, you can see you have a short one, you can have a large one, or a even larger one. So yeah, so let's press the minus. Oops. Yep, so there you can see. So, but I think maybe the first one with the 10k is uh, sufficient. Um, so instead of x there, let's try uh, let's try 10k. That's great. So um, I can see Toshi is here. <laughs> Where did Marco or Mindflare? So. Let's run it with 10k. And see how uh, wide that is. Yeah, you can see it's uh, now it's a bit. Um, it's getting a bit round, actually. Okay, yeah, it's it's running over and over here, so this is not. Not good. So I made this uh, spice directive into a uh, what is this called? It's called a comment. So here we go. Yeah, you can see it's uh, very round. That's because it's so very fast. So if you want to know how fast it is, click here and here, and then on the screen on the very bottom left, you see there's 25 microseconds. So. I don't like that, so uh, let's skip 
back to 100k. I don't like uh, round uh, digital signals. <laughs> I want them to be square. So yeah. Let's have a look at this one. That's much better. Right. I think that's it actually. Uh, oh, 35 minutes. I thought uh, I was talked only 10 minutes. Anyway. <laughs> Liner Technologies tool. And I think it was um, made because they were working on power supplies, switch mode power supplies. And um, they need a faster tool to handle all these transitions and convergence. I don't know what convergence means even. But anyway, it's about math behind the tool. Uh, LTSpice, I've used that since 2007 and when I recommend it to people they're like, oh it's really great but it's so hard to implement uh, stuff. But uh, all that has changed. I see it more and more. I even see it at the university now. They're started, they are using it. It's really cool. So, and it's free, that's the best thing. <laughs> and with free tools you, like, if you press component up here. And uh, if you look at the uh, operational amplifiers, you get, of course, their own ones. They want you to pick those, of course. But it, you can make your own models. Everything here is just a model. So, yeah. And uh, let's look at number five. I don't remember why I wanted to make number five. But, um, <laughs> uh, what I haven't done here. Okay, I have. Uh, I still have this. I still have this set reset latch. I no longer have this transistor over here. Why is that? Mm, I think I went away from this one because. Uh, yeah, I'm not finished actually. So, yes, I went away from this one because I wanted a delay. Therefore, I made an RC circuit here to get a phase delay. And. Uh, now that I want to compare, uh, combine this circuit with a clock, it has a delay and that makes uh, glitches. So glitches, you don't want that because then you can trigger circuits that you don't want to trigger. Uh, so they, that's called a hazard, I think. So I wasn't finished there actually, I noticed something. <coughs> Sorry. Just bring up the volume a little bit. So you can see we have uh, talked about detector. We have the same one. You can see LM339 as a uh, latch. So both of these two are in the same package. So there's no waste here except for all the stray components. It's, uh, yeah, that's not the best of this thing though, but it's cool. It's very configurable. What I didn't tell you is that um, the register that we are going to use this as an enable for, it's not, uh, it doesn't have an enable input. <laughs> I thought it had, but it was a parallel enable for a serial register. So what I've done here, I've done the thing that you shouldn't do. Uh, and that's uh, gated clocks. So I've taken the clock, 
let's uh, put it again. So let's see. Okay, so you have the clock signal. Let's just look at um, the first. Okay, so here you have the clock signal again. And then you have the audio, which stops here. And uh, um, the output of the detector here should then drop when this one resets. So you get a reset and it drops there. So yes, it detects over here and it resets over there. So everything's fine. Now, how do you combine that with the clock? And another plot pane here. So there's a lot of things there now. So let's just look at the output here. What I've done, and I, I think I said that in the other video, is that I have a weak, weak control here. Of the clock. So, and uh, I'm letting this. Oops, sorry. This output of this latch uh, only pull down, and with, by pulling down, I mean that I can I can choke the clock such that it doesn't clock anything. So if there's no signal, we don't want a clock. So whenever the clock has a positive, uh, let's click that, has a positive edge, we don't want anything on the output. So uh, I think. I have to simulate this longer to see the effect of what I'm talking about because <laughs> we are missing the positive pulse here which is uh, choked so uh, let's do that go into uh, edit simulation and then you say say for example 500 millisecond let's run it again See if that uh, pulse is uh, yeah. There you can see it's choking. So how is it choking then? Well, you can see the output of the comparator is low, and then when the next clock cycle comes in here, it uh, let's bring in the clock cycle. So uh, we can put it on the top. Yeah, there you can see. So when the next clock cycle come here, the blue one it is uh, sort of pulled down by this, uh, this uh, shot key dial, I think it's a shot key, no it's an ordinary one, well I, um, okay so if you have an ordinary one you will get like, let's see, about 0.7 volts, you can see it down in the corner here when I hold it here, so so if you use a shot key, then uh, it has a lower forward voltage. Let's use a low power one, like this, and run again. Let's see. There you can see the uh, chokes it a little bit harder, <laughs> so so to speak. So, and uh, you can see it's about 0.39 or something. Yeah, I, uh, uh, let's try this. Yeah, 396. So it's about 400 millivolts. So it, it's better. Yeah, in CMOS, I think he, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the clock input I'm going to use it for. Let's have a look at that. I was thinking about uh, ending the video, but now I. Uh, Let's have a look at that. CD4035. This is where this clock is going. This is, I should have a web camera, but I don't have it. So let's see. CD4035. That's the. Um, should be the register. Let's try this one. Yeah, so we have the four stage parallel in, parallel out, shift register. So I'm not using it for shift 
register I'm using it as a parallel shift register so but it's not this one let's see HEF4035 that I was talking about comes in here so I was hoping it had an enable but it doesn't so we have to gate it so and there's a clue there look Schmidt triggered action that's interesting Sorry for the amateur show here. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, I can't see the button on the screen. Let's see. Yeah, now I can see. Schmidt trigger action in the clock input makes the circuit highly tolerant to slower clock rise and fall times. And that's great because I'm gating it, it's slow. So, yeah, so I think this will work. I haven't tried it yet. So, <laughs> so that's uh, really great. So, even though I'm using a uh, gated clock here. You see, it's a bit like uh, yeah. Uh, another thing about um, gated clocks or a Schmidt trigger, Schmidt trigger, yes, is that when you have a Schmidt trigger, then you don't no longer have to be below one volt to say a logic low, because um, in because it's a Schmidt trigger, <laughs> when you get to the low level then the to get back to the positive edge you have to go above higher than you you went to get lower you get two set points so or hysteresis so, but i'm not going to talk about that because it always confuses so but yeah that's the beauty of it so even though it's fussy and um, it's not square and fast it still works so so when I look at this, it, it looks like it's going to work for me. Uh, up here, this signal. So, yeah. so uh, here it seems that, uh, okay, we have... Um, let's bring the audio again. We have the audio, yes, we get a clock. We get a clock and another clock. And then we have the... Re um, the signal is remembered and clocked in. And then the clock changes the to the next amplifier, so it has changed three times. But that, now there's no longer audio on that amplifier, so the clock is choked. So I think this will work. So I think we will end the video there. I, time is running so fast. I don't know if there's more I'm going to show you. Um, Showed you the way this works. Okay, so uh, let's bring in the uh, analog here or the um, connection between this simulation and this simulation. So for every pulse, you will store the next count value in on this next register. And the output of the MUX, after the MUX, you will have like a detector. And the detector uh, would then trigger this register clock input. So, and now I also have to um, make it go through this gate also because we don't have an enable on this one either. So, 
I'm hoping I can use the same signal, just inverted, together with that, uh, the uh, the other register also. So, but that will be for another time. So, we'll have it on a breadboard, and it's easy to see why something is working and why it's not working. So, yeah. So I would just say thank you for watching, and uh, I wonder where Mark went. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah. So if you haven't seen my video, uh, you can add as many as you want. You can have auto and all the amplifier. This output will not change because we are saying here that if the current selected output still has a signal on it, that means if it detects a signal and there's no signal, uh, yeah, it still has a signal on it. This input of this AND gate is low. So if that for some reason drops out. Uh, this one will go high, and when we are looking at the same amplifier as we are on the current, so this register is the same as the counter, we will get an equal, and uh, when we are in the same, looking at the same amplifier, and it has not a signal in it, then we will get a change. So, that's how it works. So, if I drop this one low, you will see it will change here after a while. And there it goes to 3, so... Anyway, you're welcome to show... So... Go away. I think there's some tool to see... Analyze... But it, <laughs> it, if I bring it in, you can see... In my lives... I uh, show here... You see it says analysis and this just says uh, loading so <laughs> it's no nothing in here so yeah so I don't really know what's going on mm. so I really hope I get this to work because this is the, one of the final crux of the problems to overcome, so I have received the last bits of the loudspeaker terminals, so that will be fine. So it will be fun to just make a video at my dad's place, also. Two watchers. I think I have uh, <laughs> Toshi. I think I have trolled them away with all my uh, oh, uh, streaming earlier today. By the way, I'm watching the stream now. It's just noise. Is it really that noisy? at maximum and it picking up all sorts of noise so, and the wire is just hanging in the air so that's really weird
Wow, that helmet was horrible. I wonder, maybe I can uh, do something in, uh, in this uh, program. It's strange. Oh, 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 I'm hearing myself there, so maybe I can do something about that. like that earlier today. I listened to my previous stream and it was much better. So something has gone horribly wrong. Anyway, uh, thank you very much to show. I think I will end the stream here and I will Look for some better microphone, and uh, I've been planning to buy a like an HD, uh, yeah, an HD web camera. I don't know. I have the hardware to it. it sounds ridiculous, but my computer is almost 20, 10 years old. The other one is just five or something. So maybe that one can do it. It's a bit more noisy. Maybe I need some. Larger fan on it. I do have money for it, so I can uh, can buy one. So yeah, and also <laughs> want another vlogging camera. So not sure what I'm going to do. So yeah. So it could be. Uh, uh, yeah, the audio was, was better earlier today. It could be actually the. Um, the yeah, the YouTube. But the thing is, I can't stop the stream now and start it because then I think I will cut the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. What if I put the microphone like this? I'll put it in my shirt and then. Uh, the volume down and then there's oh then it's peaking it looks like it's peaking so that's not good at all but i can see the noise on the uh, on my computer so i, I don't think um, this is it I th maybe there's some um, automatic amplification thing going here, so auto leveling, because if you have auto leveling then maybe that has screwed it up somehow, so no, I can't see I can't see uh, any, any of those mm. although maybe I have the uh, sound. It looks fine over here. Right? There's it's not showing any noise on this one, but on the mic box it's showing. So maybe something is mixed in. Uh, people, if you say disable. And uh, CD player, I don't have any CD player, stereo mix. I don't, I don't think it's getting any better.
the things that are micro vulnerables. I, I can't. Then I have to speak very close to the microphone, and uh, I don't think it's speaking right now. But then you can hear my breathing and everything, so and it's not particularly very loud. Ah, I don't know what this was. Yeah, it was working fine. So yeah, but I have seen that on other live streams. I could have stopped it and started maybe. But I think we'll end it there, so or should we can talk on uh, Facebook or something. Yeah, so, okay, the sound is still there, okay, so that's really strange. Hmm. Probably still a lot noisy as before, or maybe not. So, okay, see you later. So, bye bye.